Lewis Hamilton hasn't been having a great season so far and struggling with a car that is really fighting him. But every time they make a change to try and fix the issue, it seems to get worse. So what's going on with that Mercedes and why can't Lewis seem to get the best out of the car? So let's get nerdy on some car dynamics. We're giving away $1,000 to one of our F1 newsletter subscribers in the next week. So get subscribed with the link in the description below. And I'm writing the first one this afternoon. Now, first of all, it's the car and not Lewis. And second, George is having all of the same issues. There are loads of headlines about this saying Lewis doesn't know how to drive a bad car or that he was spoiled by perfect cars. And it's all a load of rubbish. So let me explain. Mercedes have a few main issues and we actually made a video about this already. But in summary, it's weight, drag, and porpoising. But the porpoising is the main one and it's really hurting lap time. In Australia, the Mercs were nearly a second off the Red Bulls and the Ferraris. And yes, they still got some good points, but if they want to be battling at the top, they have some big issues to solve. So the porpoising that Mercedes are facing is really quite severe. It's starting at a lower speed than on the Ferrari, but most importantly, it's not stopping before the drivers need to turn into each corner. And that's the issue here. Lewis has very little confidence in that car. He actually said the problem is when you push the car just a little bit more, it's quite spiteful. She's like a viper and you never know. Meaning in his eyes, it's a difficult car to drive. And the core of the issue is that the porpoising means that the limit of grip is a moving target. So when you're approaching a corner in a race car, you're processing a lot of information and you have many decisions to make. You need to understand what the car was like on the last corner and on the last lap on this corner and how the tires are degrading. You need to make decisions on where to brake, how much speed to carry into the corner. And the list goes on and on, but with experience, you get pretty good at computing all of this information and making the right decisions on track. And the aim is to drive just on the limit of the car, just under the point where it's about to let go. And for a good car like last year's Mercedes, this is a pretty consistent line. And a good driver can easily predict what the car is going to do. And so last year, Lewis was able to pull out a good lap whenever he needed. But Lewis has this porpoising issue now, meaning that the limit of the car is moving around. So where a good car is like this, the current Merc is actually doing this. So really, Lewis is having to drive the car below the limit, entering the corner below what it's actually capable of, because he doesn't know if it's gonna spit him off. So first, what does a good car do on turning? Well, if you consider the front tires, you want a nice even load on the tires, pushing them into the track to give you grip. So of course you have the aerodynamics of the car pushing the tires into the track already. In addition to this, as you brake into the corner, you also add load to those front tires, giving you more grip on turning. A good car will do all of this nice and evenly and predictably. But the bouncing in the Mercedes is so bad that the tires are like this. You're turning into the corner and you don't know how much grip is at the front or the rear of the car. You don't know the balance of the car. Because the bouncing isn't just straight up and down, it's kind of like a wave. So the front has loads of grip for a fraction of a second, then the weight and grip shifts to the rear of the car and the front goes light. So through the corner, the driver doesn't know whether to expect big understeer or big oversteer, or ultimately the overall grip level of the car. And it's not like you can just time it and turn in when the grip and balance is right. It's all happening way too fast. And all of this is evident in the data. By the way, this data comes from Formula One and we're looking at it through the F1 Tempo website. I've linked that in the description below. Now it's worth noting that this data is GPS, so it isn't the most accurate and the teams will have a higher resolution of data, but it's great for looking at this sort of thing. Look at this, Hamilton is the green line, Russell the white, Leclerc the red, and Max is blue. All of this data is from each driver's fastest qualifying laps that came towards the end of Q3 in Australia. So the Merck actually wasn't too bad in the first sector, not far off the Ferrari or Red Bull. The Merck then starts to slip throughout the middle sector, but in turns nine and 10, the quicker corners, the lap really starts to unravel. You can see that the Mercs are arriving slower. This is most likely a combination of their weaker power unit as well as severe porpoising. But the main time loss is at the apex of the corner, where the Red Bull and the Ferrari are able to carry a higher minimum speed and according to this, it's up to 20 kilometers an hour difference.
difference. That is absolutely insane. Also, Hamilton and Russell are basically the same through this section of track. So it's definitely the car and not the drivers. To make things worse, this lower corner speed really hurts the drivers down the next straight, where they lose around three tenths of a second. And so my point stands. No driver could take the Mercedes in this current form and lap with the Ferrari or the Red Bull, not with the bouncing like this. Hamilton did say in a post-qualifying interview that he felt there were a few tenths left in his lap, but nothing like the second needed to declare. You should check out this video about why Senna's driving style wouldn't work in a current Formula One car. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.